Today's adventure was our first long distance road trip in our new to us 2015 Tesla Model S 85D, where we drove round trip over 2,767 miles from our home in Utah to Illinois and back. Just a month prior, Jessica and I flew to California and picked up our used Model S, then toured the Tesla Fremont factory before driving home overnight 779 miles. Click the card above to watch the video I made of that adventure. Prior to this road trip, there was one short camping trip we used our Tesla for, driving 336 miles round trip to Steinacre Reservoir, which you can watch in the card above. On that trip, we charged our car at the campground, which had electrical service for RVs. On this trip, we relied solely on superchargers, except for one location where we charged from a standard household outlet for a couple of days. I planned our route and the general timing with a website called A Better Route Planner. It works well for the general planning, but I've found that it's easier to use the in-car navigation while on the actual trip. Sometimes the stops differ, but the car has the actual data, so I expect the variance. It's never been an issue. We started our 10-day journey leaving the Salt Lake City, Utah area, where, by the way, you can see many other adventures I've documented here on my YouTube channel, and headed to Grand Junction, Colorado, where we stayed overnight at a family member's house. The next day was our longest day, driving and charging for 15 hours to go 765 miles to eastern Nebraska. There we stayed at another family member's house. The next day was the sketchiest day, driving in bad weather and detours due to flooding, and getting to the St. Joseph Supercharger with 4% left in our Model S battery. We stayed overnight in Savannah, Missouri at a friend's house, then drove to Nauvoo, Illinois, where we stayed a couple of days. Then we drove to the Iowa City Supercharger before heading back to family in Nebraska for a couple of days, where we visited the Omaha, Nebraska Zoo and some other sites, before heading back through Grand Junction, Colorado and home again. Here's the back of the Model S, piled with all of our stuff for the trip. And the front also has some stuff in it. Hi, Lucy. Hi. Are you excited? Yeah. What are you excited for? Oh, yeah, nice backpack. Backpack and ponies inside the pony's bag. <laughs> Lucy, what did you just help me do? I helped you do the tires. Good job. Hey, Clara, are you ready for this adventure? Mm. Yeah. We have all of our stuff here along the floor where the kids' feet don't need the space. And here's our stuff in the front. We have some diapers for the week, some snacks, and towels and our charging extension cord and the mobile adapter. All right, girls, we're about to embark on our 3,500 mile journey. Are you ready for this? Yeah! Lucy's nodding. Lucy's ready for everybody. What about mom? Ready. All right. We're gonna be driving to Colorado tonight, um, to the western side anyway and then we'll be continuing on our way from there. We left home with the full battery, so we were able to skip the Price Supercharger and we stopped in Green River to charge, just enough to get to Grand Junction, Colorado. We arrived there just after 6 p.m. and picked up some dinner, which we ate while the car charged. Waiting for our subway sandwiches took about as long as the car did to charge. Then we drove another hour and a half to Grand Junction to our relative's house. Look at it, Gideon, there's a real rainbow. Lydia, keep looking out your window. Uh, do you see it? Yeah. What do you think? Mommy's seen a real rainbow before. You've never seen a real rainbow before? Yeah. It's so beautiful. Their house doesn't have any good electrical outlets for charging, so I left my family there and my cousin came with me and we chatted while the car charged at the nearby supercharger. It's always best to charge the battery when it is warm, plus we needed to get an early start the next day. All right, so we're starting day two now. We just left Grand Junction, Colorado. And as you can see, the views are beautiful out here in Colorado. And we have a long 14 hour day or thereabouts. So we will see how well the girls withstand sitting in their car seats for that long. But we need to get over to near Omaha, Nebraska by tonight. So that's what it's going to be. And we have uh, like five or 
or six supercharger stops along the way. We're stopping a little bit more often than we need to just to let the curls get out and stretch. So we'll see how it goes. What do you think, Lucy? Are you excited? Yeah. I wonder if I'm you're still going to be excited. So excited. <laughs> by this evening. Are you excited, Clara? Yeah. There's a little smile. What about you, Lydia? Yeah. All right. Run, 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 all the way around. Clara's getting left behind. Lydia's taking the lead. Lucy's a close second. Keep running, keep running. Run, run, run. Are you coming? Oh, Lucy, did you make a new friend? Yeah. <laughs> Are you reading her book with her? Yeah. Did you girls find some friends? Yeah. Yeah, we sitting on one on, on kid. You're sit. Oh, you are sitting on one of the kids. Yeah. <laughs> We are here in this uh, trail garden area off of the Courtyard Marriott. And you can see over here is the supercharger. Pretty nice area to hang out. But our car is charged, girls. All right, let's keep going. So we can keep going to the next supercharger. Without a doubt, it would be faster to be in a gasoline powered car and it would be able to gas up more quickly but it is great to be able to let the kids run around and explore the area and get their wiggles out. And for what it's worth, we have free supercharging, so it didn't cost us anything. So I'm willing to put up with some extra waiting as well for that. Hey Lydia, is the river so beautiful? Yeah. You can see just a little bit of river. Yeah. Lucy, do you want to show us your cool eyes? Whoa, that's cool. I can see two of them. Every time I do that face, I can see Two of these. <laughs> yeah? Uh -huh. Hey Lydia, do you want to show us your pretty eyes? <laughs> We're going straight through a tunnel, a mountain. What do you think, girls? They're holding their breath. Oh, they, they can't talk. Right. After driving for hours through the beautiful scenery of Western Colorado and funny kids' faces, we descended into the Great Plains of the Midwest. When we got to the Brush Colorado Supercharger, we walked across the street to eat lunch at Wendy's while the car charged. Then we continued on through the flatlands of eastern Colorado and Nebraska. At each supercharger stop, we explored the area and often the girls were able to discover points of interest. Hey girls, what are you playing? We're playing a game. A matching game? Yeah, yeah a matching game. Oh yeah. I think this is Gothenburg, Nebraska. Lucy, what did you find? I found a little tractor. A little tractor? That's a... Oh, train. No, it's a big tractor. Yeah, it has big wheels. Yeah, it does have big wheels. We've stopped at this supercharger many times since this trip, and every time the kids always run over to play on this tractor. And it's convenient that it's also adjacent to a hotel, so we can use the facilities there. So this one is pretty close to the freeway, and that's nice. Our last charge of the day was in Lincoln, Nebraska, where we arrived around 11 p.m. This was the worst part of the day, being tired and super done driving, but at least the girls were asleep. Our next charging destination was the St. Joseph, Missouri Supercharger, where we needed to drive to the next morning. I routed us there and let the car charge enough to get us there with a little safety margin. Then we unplugged and got to our family member's house to stay the night. I was able to plug into a standard household outlet, but at only 15 amps, it's a very slow charge source. In areas where the superchargers are few and far in between, it's a good idea to always be charging from the best source available, even if the best source is the slowest. The next morning, the car had charged an additional 30 miles of rated range, bringing us to 190 miles. We had 110 miles to go, so that's a healthy safety margin of 80 miles, which I was happy about considering where we were driving was farmland with no backup charging options. However, it was raining and windy as we started out and that safety margin was slowly diminishing. Then we came to a bridge over the Missouri River that was closed due to flooding, but the mapping software in both the car and my phone, both from Google, didn't know about. Upon changing our route, our safety margin now was concerning as the car warned us to go slower and slower in order to reach our destination. I did just that, as well as put the car in chill mode in case that helped, and we finally reached our destination with 6% remaining on the battery. But we made it in time for the event. 
Afterwards, I drove to the supercharger and arrived there with 4% or 10 miles remaining of rated range on the battery. Unfortunately, because the car had been parked for three hours, the battery was cold, so it charged slowly. Fortunately, my brother came with me and I left the Tesla charging while we went back to the event. Two hours and six minutes later, I got a notification that the charging was complete. So that was an exceptionally long charging time due to the circumstances. That day, we drove to another event in Liberty, Missouri, 53 miles south. Then we stayed at overnight at a friend's house in Savannah, Missouri, 65 miles north. Lucy, where are we? We are at Brett Paul's friend's house, and I'm sleeping in this bed. Good night, camera. Good night, camera. <laughs> We are! Yay! We then spent a couple hours at my parents' house showing our kids where I grew up before we continued on to Nauvoo, Illinois. I would say that I had the best day ever and having the best day ever. Oh, I'm so glad. Because I was in the Nauvoo Hills and I could see the hills. Like that hill? I did plug in the car the night before, so we got another 30 to 40 miles of range, and then we drove through a bunch more hilly countryside. Whoa. <laughs> Our next supercharger stop was in Bethany, Missouri, which was a bit of an unfortunate experience. When we pulled up, there was a motorcycle in one parking spot, a Model X charging in another, and the remaining four chargers were blocked by a truck and trailer. To top it off, the last two chargers were blocked by a large amount of dirt in addition to that trailer. Luckily, the motorcycle left after a minute or two. Then after I managed to get the truck owner to move, we plugged into a dedicated circuit so that we didn't have to share with the Model X. In the time that we were there, the parking spots were repeatedly parked in by gas vehicles due to the convenient proximity to the front door of the store. It was important that we nearly fully charge the battery at this stop because we were going 169 miles into a large area of zero superchargers. This is where we were charging and this is where we were going. Our Model S nearly has enough range to be able to drive the 264 miles between superchargers, but I don't like cutting it that close. I was pretty sure we'd be able to charge from a standard household outlet in Nauvoo, but as backup, I looked up campgrounds in the area with 50 amp RV electrical service. After charging up to 91%, we headed out, driving through three hours of very hilly roads. We arrived in Nauvoo with 26% remaining in our battery, but we went to an event first we had tickets for. Then we headed to our accommodations where I immediately looked into where we could plug in. After a walk around the building, there were zero electrical outlets outside and no high powered outlets accessible inside either. So I found the next best outlet, which was just a standard outlet inside one of the windows. This was about 6 p.m. that evening, charging at three miles per hour or 1.4 kilowatts. The car continued charging the entire time we were there. I forgot to start a trip meter from home, but I did in Grand Junction, and at this point we had driven 1,297 miles and used 419 kilowatt hours. The next morning we'd gained 54 miles, bringing us to 114 miles, which was just enough to get us the 96 miles to our next supercharger in Iowa City. We had another day here, so that was comforting to know that we'd be fine. We did have some other driving plans though, so we left it charging and got a ride with family to that day's activities. That evening, after 24 hours of charging, we'd gained 88 miles of rated range. Then, by the time we unplugged, 37 hours after plugging in, we had gained 143 miles. Now for a quick tour of the bunkhouse. Our trip was primarily for this family reunion and we had 40 people staying here, so this place needed to have a lot of beds and it delivered. Hey baby. Plus it had a fun play loft for kids and lots of kitchen space. It also had a spacious area outside, and my awesome cousin Blaine let me borrow his one wheel for this trip. Yeah. 
Just about any time that we were at the bunkhouse, it was either being ridden or being charged. Almost everyone gave it a try, oh, yeah, from the youngest kids to the oldest. There were lots of shaky starts, all kinds of dismounts, and lots of laughter. Whoa! <laughs> that was a good fall. Whoa! <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> no. By the end of our time there, after lots of practice, some of the kids were getting really good at it. Go Lucy! After having fallen many times. Go Lucy! Whoa. Yeah! We went to many pioneer themed activities in the area, such as wagon wheel making, spinning yarn, twisting rope, throwing pottery, and the tinsmith. One of the evenings, a severe thunderstorm rolled in and gave us quite the show. Giant storm just kicked up. And it is a heavy one. There was also a tornado warning. Luckily this porch has a pretty big awning. But luckily it didn't come my hour away. After making lots of memories with the cousins, we packed up and headed out to continue additional activities in eastern Nebraska. Due to supercharger limitations, we had to take a less direct route than those driving gas vehicles. We arrived at the Iowa City supercharger with 20% remaining on the battery, and it was located in the parking lot of a grocery store, so we picked up some food and snacks. Needless to say, at this point the girls were a little tired. We charged for 49 minutes and gained 150 miles before continuing on our way. We arrived in Des Moines with 19% or 50 miles of range remaining. We charged up to just over 70% over half an hour, then continued on to Council Bluffs, arriving there with 16% or 42 miles of range. We played on the one wheel while the car charged up to 80%. Jessica's first time on the one wheel. You're doing good. <laughs> we needed extra charge because our next stop was a house with slow charging. We arrived at our relative's house with 55% remaining and we didn't plug in the car overnight because we had plans in Omaha the next day where we knew we'd be able to supercharge easily. At this point, from Grand Junction, we had now driven 1,735 miles and used up 558 kilowatt hours, all of which was free to us. The next morning after some hanging out time with the family, we all went to the Omaha, Nebraska Zoo for the day where there were ample opportunities to take pictures on animal sculptures. This zoo has an amazing selection from all over the world in most climates. You gotta push really hard because it's a very big heavy ball of rock. Yeah. Oh, it's a cool frog, huh? No. Yeah. I bet he's a little slimy. What do you think? Is this so cool? Yeah. I love these things because they're babies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Following the zoo, the girls were really tired, so they took a nap while we drove to the nearby supercharger. Then we explored the beautiful area where that supercharger is located. We charged up a healthy amount before heading back to stay overnight at our relative's house. The next morning we had some more hanging out time with family before heading out to have fun on some water for the rest of the day. We had a paddle boat, a canoe, some kayaks, and lots of other flotation devices. The next day was our long travel day back to Grand Junction, Colorado. We arrived at the Lincoln, Nebraska supercharger with 16% or 41 miles of rated range. We drove to the Grand Island supercharger next where we arrived with 20% or 48 miles of range. While the car charged, we explored the area and washed our windows. The car had enough charge at 67% to get to Gothenburg, so we unplugged and headed there. We arrived with 16% or 42 miles of range, which was only 1% less than the car had predicted. It was now lunchtime, so we ate next door at the Nebraska Barn and Grill. By the time we finished eating an hour and a half later, the car was at 98% and now was estimating getting to the Ogallala supercharger with 56% remaining. At this state of charge, the car was only charging at 8 kilowatts and the car estimated 257 miles of rated range. We arrived at the Ogallala supercharger with 50% remaining and charged for 25 minutes, getting up to 77% or 202 miles of range. At this point, it was 101 degrees Fahrenheit and the car began to limit our air conditioning to prioritize cooling the hot battery bank while charging. I appreciate the car's software prioritizing the battery's longevity and the charge speed. Once we got on the road, the AC was no longer limited. We arrived at the Brush Colorado Supercharger with 13% remaining and got a good charge speed for that state of charge at 126 kilowatts. While the car charged, we picked up dinner at the Wendy's across the street. We were there long enough for the car to get up to 238 miles of range, or 91%, before we continued on to the Silverthorne Supercharger. The charging topography is evident in this trip graph where you can see the downward dips in the line indicating where we're going up a steep mountain so it's consuming more energy. Then right before the Silverthorne supercharger we cross the mountain summit and the road continues steeply downward so we actually gain several percent before stopping to charge. I'm a data person so I also like to observe the consumption energy graph which clearly shows the change in terrain as we ascend the mountain west of Denver. For the five miles prior to the Silverthorne Supercharger, we were regenerating on average 388 watt hours per mile. We arrived with 22 miles remaining and charged up to 206 miles or 79% before we unplugged and continued on our way to Grand Junction to stay at our relative's house where we arrived with 15%. We didn't plug in that night and the next morning I drove alone to the nearby Supercharger to charge the car up. Round trip from Grand Junction to Nauvoo and back, we went 2,703 miles and used up 887 kilowatt hours. We spent the day there having fun, hanging out with family and going on hikes, swimming, riding kids' electric cars, or just playing in the backyard. The next day, we continued playing as late in the day as we could, then we headed home. We arrived at the Green River, Utah Supercharger at 6.39 p.m. with 27% remaining on the battery. We only charged for about 15 minutes before continuing on to the Price Supercharger. We arrived there with around 10% remaining on the battery. After hanging out there for 45 minutes, the battery got up to 73%. Then we finally embarked on the last segment of our long journey. We got home with 37% state of charge or 96 miles of rated range. The next day we did some much needed cleaning on the inside and the outside of our car. The final distance from Grand Junction to Nauvoo and back home was 2,994 miles and used 987 kilowatt hours or 329 watt hours per mile on average. I forgot to set the trip meter in the beginning and missed the first 254 miles driving from home to Grand Junction. So that's a grand total of 3,248 miles or 1,070.62 kilowatt hours of electricity.
At 10 cents per kilowatt hour, that's $107 for electricity, but superchargers are double to triple that depending on various factors. Gasoline at the time was $2.83 per gallon, so with a vehicle of 25 miles per gallon, that could have cost us around $368 of gasoline. I hope this has been helpful to see how well an electric car can facilitate a long distance road trip with a young family. The latest electric cars can now charge double or triple our average charging speed, so it's only getting better from here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next adventure video. Lucy, are you gonna go somewhere or are you just balancing on purpose? You're just learning how to balance?